Why, hello there. Please, come out of the bad weather. And welcome to the rainy day raiding dungeon! <laughs> We're not calling it that. Aww. <laughs> Alright, welcome to rainy day reading. I'm here with uh, Jonathan Kaharl. How are you doing, sir? Doing good. And I'm also here with Danny Kristen. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm doing good, too. Alright. Today we are here to talk about Zenkichi Ona, an award-winning uh, horror manga from 1993. Would you uh, say it's award-winning in the same way uh, that one song from the 90s, uh, some generic white guy sang was a top number one hit because it was just a fluke in the system? I have no idea what you're talking about. I can't remember like, the name of the song. I absolutely no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I honestly don't remember the name of the song because it's so generic, but like, sometime in the 90s, like at the height of the adult contemporary years, there was this one uh, white guy who came out of nowhere and got the number one spot, but it was only because of fluke in the system. Like, uh, the charts were shifting and the way they counted things. And he was basically there, even though his song didn't really sell much, he got a lot of radio play, and that was enough to get him number one. Oh, okay. Well, so, yeah, statistics are kind of fucked. Yeah, they, they often are. Well, if you know the name <laughs> of that song, let us know in the comments. So, we, we're here to talk about some King Shiona, but before that, uh, Jonathan, you and me have something to talk about, and I'll go first since I'm still talking. Uh, recently, Okubo... Atsuchi, a uh, creator of Soul Eater, has begun his new series this week, Fire Brigade of Flames. And it's all about how people suddenly combust and burst into flame people who go on rampages throughout cities, and firefighters who are now awesome badasses who fight these flame people. Do you think he saw the internal combustion episode of South Park and decided, what if that was darker? I, I think so. I really do. <laughs> uh, but also, I, I gotta say, if you like Soul Eater, I think you're also gonna like this. I know if you like Soul Eater's artwork, you're gonna like this, because it, it's basically... You could put anything in this series in Soul Eater, and it would not look out of place. This is basically... This is basically just Soul Eater's art with new characters. Which you could honestly say was Soul Eater or not, but this isn't comedy. But I, I did enjoy it. There's only one chapter out. I just wanted to let everyone know that it's now out there and the guy is still doing some good work. So, Jonathan, you had something similar to talk about. You should go. Alright, uh, the person who uh, made Witchcraft Works uh, announced a new series as well. There's only like one chapter translated so far and I'm not even sure the second chapter's out yet. It's called Ivory Dark and it's like Witchcraft Works if you've removed all the comedy and fun and replaced it with a character trying to commit suicide and general everything is terrible then body horror and all that 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 uh sounds that sounds like something i should read about christmas time because i'll be too happy to be depressed by it <laughs> yeah it's about a girl who can see ghosts and spirits but she doesn't really uh understand what she's seeing and she's told by her father to keep it quiet. She's like living with her aunt and uncle and uh, her cousin, and they're all, and they all kind of hate her. And she's having a bad school life because the one time she tries to warn someone about a ghost that might be trying to kill their boyfriend, they don't believe her. And then when she comes, when she comes out and is truthful about it, they accuse her of being crazy and being a uh, passive aggressive and trying to break them up. And by the end of the chapter, she's trying to... I'm not making this up. By the end of the chapter, she tries to kill herself until another person who can see his ghost just pops out of nowhere in, in like, a fucking bikini swimsuit with a witch hat and, like, all witchcraft works with a gun and kills one of the demons. <laughs> and it's like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> that sounds... And yeah, so it's probably like uh, Witchcraft Works, but gayer and with a whole lot more suffering. That sounds wonderful. So there you go, folks. We'll st we start this off by telling you about two new series from two very popular offers. Hey, this, it sounds wonderful. 
They also, also sound. They're also pretty related to the season and all. Yeah, well, they they definitely are. Uh, just one last note on Fire Brigade of Flames. It is released in Weekly Shonen Magazine. So, hey, no longer waiting a month to get a new chapter from from this person. My God. Yeah. Now, if only right. they could do that for Blue Exorcist. Yeah. Yeah, really. That I haven't is read Blue Exorcist. I, I No, I read the first volume. I have not read any more of that. It's really good, and I'm really annoyed by how damn slow it is, because it has the pacing of a weekly series, but it's monthly. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. All right. Well, I think it's time we get on to... At, let me ask you guys, what have you been reading... And Danny, because me and Jonathan ate up the beginning of the show, I'm going to start with you. What have you been reading lately, Danny? Um, well, I haven't really been reading much of anything. Just been, um, the only manga I've read recently, besides the one we're going to talk about today, is, uh, just new chapters of, um, Jojo, Pajolian, and, um, we Jojo haven't had someone on. talk about jo any JoJo on this, which I'm absolutely amazed by. First off, so all I know we... about JoJo is the memes. Oh, That's do all. not! You're not seriously telling me you have not read any JoJo, Jonathan? Nope. I've seen a oh. bit of the uh, part three OVA, but not all of it. Oh, th the that's OVA. terrible. Yeah, there was uh, an OVA for part three okay. before the end. Like years, but actually, there's funny stories. Like the f second half of it was produced in like the 80s or 90s or something, and the first half was produced years later with way better animation quality. I did not know that. That's that's fantastic. That sounds about as JoJo as JoJo gets. So ba back to you, Danny. Why don't you tell us a bit about JoJo Leon? Oh, um. Where to begin? It's it's hard to explain just because. Are you on the part where it's basically it. holes? Uh. uh no. Uh. It's just it's it's been going on for I don't know. I can't remember how many years now. It feels maybe it's five years now. Um, and we still don't know what's going on. Pretty much. Basically, <laughs> yeah. This... That that's JoJo in a nutshell. This has been going on for five yeah. years. We don't know the plot. Yeah. Basically, uh, there's it. It takes place in um like after the great Japanese earthquake, uh, back in that basically the same like earthquake tsunami they had back in 2010. I think it was. Um, but in the JoJo verse, and um, it call it creates this mis these mysterious structures in a town called uh, Moro, called the Wall Eyes because they look like eyes. And um, whenever, if you put bury two things in the ground um, beneath the Wall Eyes, they'll combine into one thing for some reason that no one can figure out. Anyway, um, a girl Yasuho. Um, discovers a boy buried underneath the wall eyes who is see he's naked and he has four, four balls yeah to make a point <laughs> Araki makes a point to um, mention that he has four balls um, and he doesn't remember who he is um, and so basically he's just trying to figure out who on earth he is, and he gets sort of taken in and cared for by this family, the Higashikatas, and they nickname him Josuke. Is it Dio? Uh, is it Dio? No, Dio's no. killed off in the last part, Steel Ball Run. Yeah. Yeah, but apparently he has an impact Eagle. on every single part of the series at this point. Um. Didn't he become a dinosaur sometime? Like that was part seven, yes. yes. That, that <laughs> was Diego. That was the. Reborn Dio, and then You're... he died like twice in Field Boy Run. And, uh, but yeah, and there are these like, there are these people who can turn into stone, which are like, I'm guessing they're sort of the new universe parallels of the Pillar Men from Part 2. Yeah. So, 
basically they keep showing up and getting killed. There's no there's no real main antagonist yet, but um it, it's all just there's... about the one big mystery of who Josuke is. Why yeah. were the two people that he was buried in the ground? It, why, basically, it was like, why were their bodies hidden that forced this person to become kind of these two people to become one person? This sounds and, like some Grant Morrison shit. I actually can't think of who Grant Morrison is, so I, I can't. I don't know how to answer. Oh yeah, that. I guess I'm the only comic fan here. He's the guy who wrote Batman Rip and Final Crisis and uh, a bunch. Uh, 90s run on Animal Man. Basically, whenever you write something, it gets so meta that it kind of goes up its own ass, and it's amazing. Hmm. It's kind of hard to describe. Like, well, uh, do you remember when I was tweeting about that one series? Like, I believe it was called The Filth, and like, there was one uh, uh, to uh, an arc where the a uh, city was attacked by gigantic flying sperm. I do not. No! <laughs> You're the only What? What happened now? <laughs> yeah, that's. This series is. Like, really good, but it keeps throwing out weird shit like that. Like, uh, gigantic, uh, flying sperm created through magic, and this one guy who's so sexually virulent, he'll eventually overwrite the human race with his DNA. Or this other arc, which was about a serial killer obsessed with pee. So, Dan so Danny, uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and cut you off. Say, JoJo Part Eight is fun, but we don't know how to describe it because we're so deep into the fucking fandom that we kind of don't even understand why we're having fun anymore. We just know the fights are awesome, and the fights also, really are good in JoJo. We still don't know what it's about. Like, what is it? What direction does it have? Has it even yeah. started in it? We, we really like don't know, because I think there are multiple directions. The directions they can take is, uh, why was Josuke killed? Who are the stone men? What, what's with the fruits that can turn people, like, super young? It's, it's just all these different plot lines that are all just kind yeah. of, at, at the moment, in a monthly series, are all just spiraling in three separate directions, and we have no clue how many years it'll be before they all actually connect. So yeah. for now we have I mean, no like, idea. So it sounds like you guys are in the is... are in the uh, Eisen part of JoJo or something. Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. That's how you explain it. Yeah, and this is like the parallel of Part Four, and Part Four took a while to kick off because we had the whole bow and arrow. Part Four never really arc kicked arc off against. Part well, four... it had. It, okay, it, it, it did have at least... um, where they're trying to take down red hot chili peppers for a while, but then they took them down. Yeah. And then that's when the whole thing with Kira, um, that's when Kira was really introduced, and that's. And, and then when it, it turned really into a slice of life series and turned into the worst JoJo with the most creative fights. What? I think it's besides Steel Ball Run the best arc. Are you because kidding it's, me? No. It's slice of life JoJo. How do you not love that concept? Because the like JoJo from... in question is the worst JoJo. Like, literally, not... this JoJo, jo part four, would have been infinitely better with any other JoJo, but this JoJo sucked. I, feel like I think David he's great. He's just like, he's, <laughs> he's just like a big kid. Uh, he's not like the most entertaining JoJo, but in my opinion, worst JoJo isn't a bad thing because they're all great. Uh, Actually, guys, in my opinion, Jotaro is the worst guys, Jojo. We're, uh, we're 50 minutes of the episode and we've only covered Danny. <laughs> and I have like uh, three or four things I want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Da Danny, thank you. Thank you for bringing up Jojo. Uh, Jonathan, go. <laughs> okay, I'll try to keep this short. Uh, I'm, um... Uh... Oh god, I just remembered Boku Girl and I want to rant about that, but you'll probably already see the review by the time this gives up this gets up so I'll just skip that I'm uh, reading a few series uh, one of them is Sun Ken Rock it's this Sonin series like uh, about uh, this uh, tiny crime group in uh, Korea 
led by this one Japanese guy who wanted to be a policeman, flunked out, and then they saw him beating up some goons and decided, hey, he should be our leader. And that's literally how he became a mob boss. Are you so, serious? He's you know, the mob I'm serious. Like I, I saw pages uh, that you were po that you were posting and making jokes about. I didn't know he was the boss. Well, he kind of is. It's like this one guy, who, this one of the actual leader is like he realizes this kid won't agree to be like a gangster for obvious reasons. So he's just like, "Hey, what if you were our boss?" And he just swallows it. He's like technically the one in charge, but he's letting uh, this guy do a lot himself too because. He sees he has talent, and he figures, hey, he could just groom him to be what he needs. Okay. But at least that's that's what's implied. At least I, for all I know, he really could just be like, hey, what if this guy was the boss? Okay. <laughs> that sounds yeah, wonderful. <laughs> it's like really, it's it's really good. Like the. Uh, people behind it actually put a lot of effort into it. They uh, even hire real stuntmen so they can uh, take pictures of them doing things their staff can't do so they have uh, references when they're doing the art for the series. I'm not, I mean, e actual prevention stuntmen uh, doing martial arts. They, take, they travel to Korea and take a lot of pictures around uh, the different cities so they have reference shots. And they just put a lot of effort in making the series look as good as it possibly can. Which is just really impressive to me. It has a lot of great action. It's really funny. But when it comes to women, it's kind of terrible. Like, you know that one episode of Paranoia Agent where uh, the dad uh, is kind of a pedophile? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he basically justifies More than kind everything. Of. He basically sees himself as a hero in a sonin manga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, remember that. Yeah, that's this is that kind of sonin manga at times. Like, it's trying to be all just and right, but it does it in the dumbest way possible by victimizing every single female character in the series in the worst ways. Like, it gets nasty at a few points. It even gets downright sexist at one point. I really don't want to get into it because then I'll just be here all day. But like it has mm -hmm. its heart in the right place but it can just keep saying stupid shit over and over. <laughs> it's honestly kind of astounding. Speaking of stupid I'm also reading Beelzebub and I love it. I've heard, uh, I've heard good things about Beelzebub. I, I, already, I already stated what I said. I disagree with everyone in the world. I hate the comedy. I like the action in Beelzebub. Shush. It's about this dumb delinquent kid named uh, Oga, I believe. Oga Tatsumi or something like that. No. Oga Tsubasa. And he uh, sees this... Uh, he sees Freddie Mercury floating down a river one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, I don't know what it is Go in on. Japan. <laughs> well, anyways, and then uh, Freddie Mercury splits in half and a baby pops out of him. <laughs> and uh, that is the son of Beelzebub. And it, it's like called Baby Biel. And it basically latches on to him and he has to raise it to be the destroyer of Earth. Yep. Now, if this was like an a serious series in any regard to go down like a try to examine the situation seriously but instead it is a very stupid self-aware comedy and it's kind of amazing just all the stupid shit that keeps happening <laughs> like for like hmm. like nearly half of the f of the series it doesn't even bring up other demons besides uh BL's caretaker Hilda, who is who is amazing, and like one brief trip to the demon world that ends as soon as it begins, and it's just about uh, Oga constantly having to deal with a bunch of punks at school, but for the dumbest fucking reasons every time. It's either because they want to beat him up for recognition, or because he's trying to find someone more evil than him that BL will uh, want as his parent. And he never finds anyone's worse. I mean, at one point when he finally takes over this, he even takes over the entire school at one point, even though we didn't care about that at all. And it's like the greatest moment because right after he's like 
having a power overflow from like power he got from BL so he has to punch it away and he ends up pointing it at the school and destroys <laughs> it all <laughs> yeah and when the school gets built later it's because of another son of BL and, and he's like mad at a uh, Oga's best friend because he thinks he uh, uh, stole his uh, not girlfriend because it's never going to happen it's just so ridiculously stupid like all these serious situations keep happening and characters keep nearly dying because the sons of the kings of demons are a dumb baby and a stupid uh, game obsessed shut in who uh, whose men think they know what's right for him and keep trying to cause military coups it's just so fuck like the best part I've seen so far the demons hire this uh, one normal human teacher for the school so they can learn more about the human world but they don't hide at all that they're demons but no one tells him ahead of time he's going to be teaching demons so he's constantly kind of trying to comprehend just what the hell he's seeing in class while think about how he's going to provide for his family it's like so, and it's really hard because like they're all adults. One of them's like bound up in chains with a paper bag over his head. Another one's a clown. And he's just like, what? <laughs> he's just trying to keep a straight face the entire time. Eventually, he sees uh, the son of uh, Beelzebub, and he's a kid. And he's like, okay, that's normal. I'll just go with it. <laughs> he just kind of gives up on his sanity. It's beautiful. Oh, and. Uh, there's just so much I can talk about, I'm going to do a full review of it later, but it is the dumbest fucking thing and knows it and it's wonderful. It's like Madoka Box if it was written by an idiot who knew he was an idiot. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Thank and, you. Oh, crap, there was one more series I wanted to talk about, but I honestly <laughs> cannot remember. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Princess Resurrection. You're, you're, I, you're right. hearing the manga on that. Yeah, I just uh, want, wow. I'm just going to say, since it's going to take like a month to get out, that manga was actually uh, supported by Universal Studios of Japan. So literally every single movie in their catalog, that manga could use as what, however it wanted. Are you see, that's amazing. Yes, yeah, so that means, yes, there's a Back in the Future time machine. There's the, there's the fly... Uh, there's multiple zombies, including an Evil Dead chapter, another based off Return of the Living Dead, uh, aliens that have Jedi powers, uh, Lovecraftian monsters and Necronomicon, a Shining chapter, uh, The Mummy, uh, several different wolfmen, various vampires. It's just kind of nuts, and it goes. Oh, and there's even Godzilla at one point. Oh, and did I mention that? Uh, one of the main villains of those series is basically just Kashern. I, I have something you can mention about that manga. Go How's for it. the anime? <laughs> Actually, not that bad. How is? No, that wasn't supposed to be the. Oh well. No, I mean I it's not like. Better. Well, it's, well, it's for the time it was made. It's does it has some interesting additions, but it's also really toned down a lot of the violence. Which is annoying, but on the other hand, what they did with the Doctor is amazing because I can only describe the anime version of him as Stephen Colbert pretending to be Dio Brando with the voice of an old <laughs> Japanese man. Oh my god. It's amazing. And then the manga basically just saw that up and like, you know what? That was cool. So when he returns again later as, a, as an intelligent zombie, he's acting exactly like that and doing JoJo poses. That that's wonderful. Yeah, so it's a uh, good manga. You should read it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna be quick. I I because luckily I didn't pick something very intensive to talk about. I'm gonna talk about the new sumo manga in Shonen Jump. Hinamaru Sumo, and it's about this kid, Ushio Hinomaru, a very small guy, but he wants to become, uh, basically, his goal is to become the Hinoshita Kaizen, which is basically a, a high-ranking professional in sumo, but he's got a very small body, but after training for years, he's kind of worked past that to become 
sort of his own expert at, at sumo in his own class, even though his he ha doesn't have the body for it. And so it, it's very much the generic uh, sports manga go, uh, go around. He goes to a weaker school in terms of sumo. He finds people who really probably wouldn't have joined sumo if he hadn't gone there. He, he rounds them all up, makes a team. They all train together. They all fight together. There's a bunch of really high-level rivals. It, it is a lot of the same cliches you'll see in a lot of sports series, but I would argue that in the same way that Seven Deadly Sins uses its cliches to its advantages, Hinamaru Sumo does the same. Yes, it's all cliches, but it's all well-written cliches, all the characters are likable, the artwork is wonderful. Like, especially during sumo matches, it just, it really works to the manga's favor. And Are there any fat jokes? No! Oh there were no God. fat jokes. In fact, a lot of the characters are not depicted as fat, but rather like, like, you know how in strongman competitions you don't see like those super upper body muscle guys, you see like yeah. the guys with the larger gut? That's how a lot of the characters are depicted. As kind yeah. of strongmen, you know, sportsmen. So, and I really like that as well, so... So yeah, uh, if you're interested in trying out a new a new sports manga, Hinamaru uh, Sumo is a uh, is currently running in Shonen Jump, and I think it's pretty good. I think I'm gonna have to finish that series about the girl who kills aliens with her orgasms before I get to that. What the flying <laughs> fuck? And that's yeah, I decided. I'm honestly not sure if I like or hate that thing. What is it even called? How can you not like that? <laughs> It's, it has like no, no. realistic art, but I don't even remember the name. I just have the bookmark somewhere. Oh Maybe my God. I deleted it after it got to the after it got all rapey. Alright, well <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. I, I guess now <laughs> now we'll use that as the perfect segue into today's manga. Zashiki Ona, uh, also known as Phantom Stalker Woman. Oh, we're talking about Unogasai? I don't know what that is. You've, you've seen Future Diary. Oh, oh, I didn't know the Japanese name. No, okay, you're right. I, I know Future Diary. Uh, no, we're not talking about Future Diary. We're talking about, uh, see, we're talking about a horror manga from 1993 uh, about a college student, Hiroshi Mori, who one day, who one night... Hang on, let, let me let me get my creepy voice for this. Who one night hears a strange knocking at his neighbor's door, unable to sleep, he peeks out, only to see a woman dressed in a trench coat and dirty shoes, knocking at her neighbor's door. Little does he know that this woman, after laying eyes on him, truly has. You know, this is why I'm not a story writer. I have no idea where to go from there. She starts stalking him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, it, this was a, it was a rather short uh, horror story, at about eleven chapters, and most of it was really building up to the final chapters. I think one of the biggest killers uh, for this manga for me was that I really didn't find the woman all that like creepy or scary. I, it, there were moments, I think, especially near the end, that that it kind of got to me, but. There were some moments in the beginning that kind of pick, depicted this more silly to me. And I kind of had to ask myself, is this because maybe... I mean, it's 2015. I've seen a lot of horror movies. I've seen a lot of horror comics uh, of all different kinds. Am I just kind of ruined to this? Like, is this just not at a level where I can find it creepy anymore? I, and I, I don't know what you guys I'd think. I'd say it's... I'd say it's not really it's not really that scary at or creepy at first because it's just kind of hilarious with how they like do the art and how cliched this is now. Like uh, she leaves a scary drawing in the guy's room of him and his girlfriend, and she depicts herself as a gigantic uh, abyss with eyes, and I'm like, oh, that's adorable. Yeah, it's very true. This, Relationship this goals. It, it really is. It's kind of like watching Halloween today. Like, 
like, I wouldn't say this is like Halloween, but like it's like you watch Halloween today, and it can be creepy at times, but for the most part, you're kind of just there admiring that, yeah, this did scare a generation, uh, a yeah. generation, two, two generations ago. I'm not I, sure I, I'd I kinda... say that. I'm not sure I'd say that, because with Halloween, I can never laugh at it. But this is hilarious to me. Like, every time that woman smiles in later chapters, uh, instantly in my head, I hear uh, the voice of Butthead going, Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh like... my god, you're right! I never <laughs> noticed it, but this is totally Beavis and Butthead characters! Jesus! <laughs> oh, no! And, like, oh, there's, that no. scene, there's that scene where uh, where the guy's friend uh, chases her down, and he's always smiling. He looks more terrifying than the woman at any other point in the series. He looks like I, I honestly like found that whole you. sequence really freaking silly. <laughs> Oh, it was it, it, it was terrible because it's like she she gets the idea. Oh, she gets the idea that every Yandir gets. It, it's like, oh, he has friends around him. I should kill them to make sure they don't get in the way of us. And and but then it's like the dude's like, I know karate, and then just kicks her in the stomach. He kicks her like twelve times, I think. Even says something like that, and she just keeps getting else like, okay, fuck this. <laughs> yeah, that's just great, and she runs all fat like a cheetah, and she just looks ridiculous while doing it, panting hard. She's like in high heels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's carrying the two bags. <laughs> we we never know what's in those bags, by the way. Oh, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> My thoughts on the story. Uh, well, first of all, I thought I thought it was pretty good. Um. It hearing that's like acclaimed as one of the best horror manga of all time. That that kind of surprises me, just because I didn't find it particularly scary. I thought it was creepy, but as far as horror goes, it felt like kind of a kind of a low standard for best of all time. But um. I don't know if maybe it's acclaimed because of that, because it claimed like that because of um, if it had an influence on other horror manga or if it was just like the best of the time, like like you said, Halloween. Um, if that's the case, then I can understand. But um, just comparing it to the kind of horror we have now, like 20 years later, it doesn't strike me as one of the best. No, I still, I still enjoyed it. Thought I had, I thought I had creepy art. I thought, um, and I thought the girl was, I thought she had a great design. Thought she looked really, really creepy. Yeah, she kind of looked like a like a classical version of Satan. Kind of like sort of goatish features. Uh, another mm -hmm. uh, sort of horror manga I read once, one more like psychological horror. Uh, homunculus had this guy who looked suspiciously like this the devil. Although that was a that was went in a completely different direction in that one though. Yeah. Um. Speaking of which, well, we need we need to do an episode on that series one day because it's it's a literal mind fuck. I mean literal. How many chapters is it? It's it's one of the larger ones, but it's kind of, it's like a few volumes long, so we would have to plan ahead. Yeah, I'll, t I'll tell you right now, that's number four then, because before that we got the Akumetsu, we got, uh, let's see, we got Akumetsu, we got Dora Hidora, and then we got Junjai Romantica, so. Yeah, we got a lot. Yeah, we're working on it, we're working on it. And we're off topic, All right. aren't we? Yeah, we are. <laughs> we totally are. <laughs> it's, it's understandable, because there's not too much to talk about this series other than how ridiculously entertaining it is at first, but... I can kind of mm -hmm. see why this was popular at the time, because I, I think you said before we started recording that uh, this series came out at a time when, like, the Yandre didn't really exist, and, like, uh, the idea of a stalker wasn't really explored much in Japanese media, so it came out at just, like, the right time to kind of shock everyone. 
Yeah, and I think in a way that's kind of why it earned uh, the moniker of, like, the scariest manga is because at the time, at the time it earned it because it was. It was something people didn't really think about. It was something that now that it was in their heads, it could scare them. And then later, it might be just recognized for what it did. Uh, like, would I say, would I recommend this to someone looking for a really scary read nowadays? You would recommend it to them if they want a good comedy. Eh, yeah, I, I guess, I guess, like, if you really turned out all the lights, really tried to get into the mood of it, I think this could scare you, but... I think only, like, the last three chapters are scary in any particular way. Yeah. It, that is true. Like, the... The last, the last like, real chase through the hospital was, like, terrifying. It really that's, was. That's not even a chase. Mm -hmm. It was more like a, just one guy desperately trying to get away, and she's just fucking with him at that point because she knows he can't do shit. Yeah. Yeah. I w I w <laughs> It is true, yeah. And I, it's definitely that helpless feeling that kind of gets to you, that makes you really... That really gets to you reading this manga. Yeah, I also like how yeah. the plot's based out. Like, it seems like the guys pulled the answer of what's going on now. Their asses at the last moment. I mean, I mean, early on, not the last moment. Early on, when they uh, remember a kid, this girl they used to bully. But then it turns out the very next chapter, she's still alive, and she's uh, the, the living. Very she was just yeah. living her life normally at home. So this woman wasn't that lady, and we never find out who she actually is, which I like, especially in the final chapter where it hints that she's not even human, when she's like crawling on the ground like she's some sort of Ringu monstrosity and just skitters away, which is uh, both creepy and hilarious at the same time. And she's like, hey, what's yeah, going on? I'll... Skitter, skitter, skitter. Woo, woo, woo. She just like the way breaks out of the shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit, when I first read this, I kind of didn't get that because I figured, because I figured that they weren't going the monster route. I figured they were just going the like, oh, this is a person who just wants to fuck your day up because people can be assholes, and this chick obviously has a few screw looses. I'm trying to and... remember uh, what year Tomei first came out, because this series feels like it's taking a lot from that, but I think maybe it came before it. I'm not sure. Uh, you said Tomei? Oh, you don't know about that? It's a series uh, about this uh, monster girl who's immortal, who just ma uh, sort of attracts men to her like a magnet. And, uh, horrible things happen, they usually end up killing her, but she keeps coming back and making more men miserable, and it's like, it usually involves murders and such, and there's like a lot of grotesque body imagery and later stuff, and they even made a bunch of weird live action movies, including ones where just a cell of her, just a cell of her is enough to like, turn other people into her. That's so awesome. Like, no, so no, like, I, in, I hadn't heard of that. So they, yeah, like, one of the movies, there's just a entire family of her fucking around with this guy uh, who uh, killed her in, like at the start of the movie and another she's like in a it's just hospital madness with, like two Tomies running around trying to kill each other because all Tomies hate each other for some reason it's just ridiculous <laughs> it's like Freddy versus Jason only it's a cat fight <laughs> no, I'm not sure cat is appropriate considering it kind of gets into grotesque body horror by shaping shit at some points. Good to know, then. Yeah, but I got, right. got like, Tommy vibes from this, like, with the whole women will cause a downfall of men thing that Japan seems kind of obsessed with for some reason. You ever notice that in horror? They, they really seem terrified of women. Uh, I did kind of notice that with... I, I do know that The Ring and The Grudge were based off of Japanese horror movies. And, uh, I, I kind of... You can notice it there, like, all the vil all the main villains are women. So, yeah, you kind of do notice that, so... Yeah, but it's... I always like, think that... I always think that comes from, like, a, a kind of a corruption of innocence um, thing, because, like... Little th things that are always in horror and always scary are like 
dolls, little girls, things that you associate with like childhood or purity, and but then they're they're corrupt. They're trying to kill you. They're evil. That's that's what's like universally scary to people, and I think that's how it is with um, a lot of women in horror when they're the villains. Kind of that corruption of the purity that they see it as, or the gentleness yeah. in a sense, because yeah. that's that's how they're seen, and then. They just, That's definitely part of it, but I think there's like something more going on. Like, whenever this comes up in like, Western horror, it's more subtle about it. It's like, like, like maybe have like vagina imagery or something. But this has a monsters that are literally just women who have like some sort of strange thing about them, and their uh, motives usually revolve just fucking up the lives of the nearest man or something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's basically how you describe the plot of this. I mean, dude catches eye of a, of a crazy woman, and she just kind of shows up and fucks him. And not in the good way. I, I realized my terrible wording, like, halfway through it coming out of my mouth, so... Well, I, I feel well, I, like... We need to it's talk, kind of funny, we, we I feel like... We need to talk about the ending of this. Cause we have oh, the really, ending? Yeah, because... Okay. Yeah, you go on. Actually, there is something about the ending I was very curious about. If the ending was supposed to imply that she was kind of this, this not human, but a being that just looks for people and hunts for them, then why is it that... The, the whole reason this started is because this woman was banging on the door of Hiroshi's neighbor, Yamamoto. And in the last chapter, we see Yamamoto had just left. And apparently this was enough to throw this being off. So why is it so why was it that Yamamoto seemed to be able to survive until they walked back into town? I think I... Well, what was going on there is uh they weren't she he wasn't particularly uh, that close a target of her yet. So uh, she just switched her mind. But when she's like uh telling uh the main character that she doesn't know who Yamamoto is later on, I think that's just her fucking with him. Because, uh, like, we never see things strictly from her perspective, so, like, you can't, you can only take what she says with a grain of salt. Yeah. So, like, what when I, he What can, I think is... Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, what, what I think about, like, why... Um, he just had to leave to get away from her. Um, what really, what really confused me about that is the fact he came back, and that he was even like talking to her about what happened to um, what, what was the main character's name? Hiroshi. Yeah, Hiroshi. <clears throat> Hiroshi, and um, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe she was like, cause, cause I think she's not human. She's a being. Like how many times she got the shit kicked out of her and just kept getting up and how fast she run. I think she was somewhat supernatural. So I don't I, I'm wondering if she was maybe like tied to the city or somehow or maybe just the building even because um, Yamamoto uh, like we find in the last chapter she had been knocking on Yamano Yamamoto's neighbor door when um, she found him. Um, so obviously she has something some connection to that building kept knocking on people's doors there and just going down the line um, I yeah I don't think he realized the sheer uh, implications of her at that point and uh, so well, I mean I think he figured that the if inside he of his oh, I'm sorry the, I mean the inside of his house was like destroyed and just uh, like completely vandalized by her I don't uh, know if of that course she might have done that after he left but um Oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. You know what? Here's the thing. I think it was by her, because I think we were supposed to note the similarities between what was on the wall and sort of the scribblings she was leaving in Hiroshi's apartment earlier in the series. That would make sense. So I think sense. that was her. I like, she... I feel like... Sorry, you go. No, I was just going to say... I, I think she's been doing this like I think what we're supposed to tell you is she's done this a couple times because how else would she have known just immediately to get get a spare key or how easy it was or who to go to 
Yeah, I think like, she, it's, like, yeah, yeah, I think Yamamoto already yeah. left at that point, and she uh, broke in to, to do that. And all the banging at his door, she was probably just to track new prey or something. Yeah. yeah. I thought so. But again, I, but uh, here's the thing, though: if she's attracted to the building, like I get we've seen her outside, but it's like I still kind of come back to my question. Why didn't she go after y Yamamoto when she was willing to go after Hiroshi in the hospital? Because Hiroshi was still in the city, wasn't well, we he? We don't know how... Yeah, he was uh, always still in the city. I, I guess he that never is left possible, the city. yeah. Yamamoto just went who knows where. Why he came back is um, what I want to know. Yeah, I don't think like, he... Maybe he heard... I, thi I think his plan was to leave and just let her uh, take things out on some other guy. And when he came back and was hearing all these ghost stories, he didn't realize it was about her. And did not realize just how much shit he was stolen. Or it's possible when he heard the ghost stories, he thought since he, since another person had already taken the full brunt of her curse, he was off the hook. Like in the ring, they make a copy of the video once you've already watched the video and give the curse to another person to get rid of it on yourself. Maybe he thought he had done the same thing, and that's why he felt he could come back to the city. Oh yeah, that makes sense. I think maybe. I kind of like I how think the maybe that might have been. I'm sorry. Um, I think that may have been what he was like trying to do. Like he left just so she would maybe leave him alone and pass pass on to someone else. But I think um, when he finally heard, like maybe he caught wind that Hiroshi had gone missing or something, because like it said he. One of the rumors is he suffered for like three days and three nights after that, but doesn't doesn't say what happened after that. And obviously Hiroshi isn't there, so we don't know what happened to him. So I guess he's gone missing, and he must have just come back out of guilt, maybe, like trying to find out what happened, and because he felt somewhat responsible. I doubt that. I, I don't think. Yeah, the way he was I don't acting. Think, I don't, I'm sorry, you go, Jonathan. <laughs> Yeah, the way he was acting, all kind of happy and dorky, and just like, it's just like one of my ghost stories for her. I don't think he fully understood the implications of the situation until she came back, addressed him, and then was like, oh shit. Yeah, and I don't think there's anyone here that seriously doubts that Hiroshi died. Oh, just yeah, right yeah. then, right there. Uh, you no, know, he didn't die right then, right there, but he's definitely dead. Yeah. Well, I, the story, the ghost story was like the man went mad for day for days after that moment. But if he's not dead, he's fucked. Oh, His yeah. mind mm -hmm. is fucked. Hey, you know, I will say I will say this about this manga. This manga does one thing about horror really right, and that is, it understands that what you don't see is always better in horror than what you do see. And there's a lot only of stuff the, that we... Huh? I only knows that half the time because we keep seeing the woman's face and it just looks so ridiculous. When it's covering up her face, she's actually kind of intimidating and terrifying and otherworldly. But otherwise, but she otherwise. is butthead. I, you know, I, I like to think the author, when he was drawing this, didn't know Beavis and Butthead existed. And that's why he thought he was drawing a genuinely scary face. And I, I hate you, Jonathan. I really fucking hate you, because I did not see... I don't, I didn't watch Beavis and Butthead growing up. I saw, like, one or two episodes, so I know about it. I don't... I, it's not in my conscious. I would have never made the connection. But you had to fucking say it. <laughs> did I just I, score? He's Butthead. Huh? Did I just score? You scored. <laughs> Alright, I think it's time for final oh, uh, thoughts. I just wanted to say about the ending, I like that the way they told it, it wasn't very clear all that happened and all the, uh, nothing was, like, spoon-fed to you. It's all up for an audience interpretation. It gives, it leaves the story off on just the perfect, spooky, unnerving note, and then she scuttles away like Zoidberg, and that's hilarious. Like, woo! Uh, all right. Final thoughts. Um, I guess my final final thoughts would be it was good, but I thought it was a little short because I just breezed through it in like an hour, 
while I was at work. So, um, it just, it went by really quickly, and I don't think that, um, was used to its advantage. It, it felt like if it had drawn out more, if they had, um, would have extended the horror, extended the tension and anxiety, would have helped it along better, but definitely good, and a very short read, um, so you don't have to really commit to it if you want to check it out. I think it's more an interesting piece of history than anything else. I mean, it's like really funny, but only in the sense that I don't think these people intended this to be as hilarious as it is, and there's not really much anything scary about it, but it like can lead a lot of groundwork for a lot of future uh, staples of the genre and uh, just the anime and manga mediums in general. So it's interesting to get context for that. But, like, this is something I'm probably going to forget about. It's not like Homunculus or uh, that this one ridiculously bad series I read about the end of the world where all the rats revolted against people and then it was all the ants and it was like the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen. I, I I've read Re I've read Regan. I considered that it. for this month, but I figured <laughs> I I kind of figured you know we 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 want to be scary. We don't want to be like fu silly up in the here. Yeah, but like right. I'm gonna remember something like Regan and something like Homunculus because, but I think it's partly because they're ugly. Like this series has like, like ugly designs, but not very ugly material it keeps things too generic and simple but those series delve really deep into thing into like the dark recesses of how people perceive the world yes even region it just did it in the dumbest way possible because it was like more focused on well, yeah, but every like, character I know region... that wasn't Sorry. no you, you go ahead you finish yeah it's like it makes every character as ugly as possible and just makes them the worst human beings imaginable so it's like more about how much people generally just kind of suck and are kind of deserving this while a homunculus breaks out a lot of abstract absurd imagery and ugly people but like explores like our deep insecurities and what makes us us but it does it in a way with a character who's very amoral very questionable very like someone who doesn't even know himself. Oh, did I mention at one point he eats his own cum? Oh, wait, he snorts it up. That's right. Okay. okay. Yeah, first, it was. It off, was. Amunculus is made by the person who made Itchy the Killer. So. Oh God, Itchy the Killer. That was <laughs> terrible. Anyway, first off, I uh, on region. I will never get over the fact that of all the people in that series, the teacher survived. <laughs> that was the biggest bullshit. That really oh, was! He's probably gonna die in the end, the way they loved him. Yeah, but he survived to the end of the manga. That's a problem. Well, you can't uh, kill but a But secondly, cockroach. what year was Homunculi? That is a good question. I think it was in the 2000s. You see, there you go. And I know that uh, Regan was also 2000s. This was early 1990s. And as you, as you can see... By looking back at old horror, like in any genre, in any, or not any genre, any year, any decade, you look back at horror and you see that it evolves with each year. It gets a little more grotesque. It, it does, it tries a little harder, does a little more to try and get to its audience. And I think in that way, Zashiki Ona, you're right. It's kind of a time capsule of what was scary at that time. What yeah, worked for I, that time. Yeah, but I think even I, for like a time capsule, it's kind of lackluster like something like Halloween I can look back on and generally be really impressed by because there still is a lot it did right really well even like the original Friday the 13th has elements like that like the first Nightmare on Elm Street and these are all not particularly good movies but what they get right they really get right this never gets right exactly what it needs to get right and kind of becomes devolves too much into a comedy. It's like a sequel of one of those movies and then uh, the original that's kind of started everything in terms of quality, so just kind of throws me off that it's just so kind of, eh. I disagree. I think it is a very, it's a very nicely, tightly packed story. 
about one man who just stumbles on to the worst thing he could have in his life and just how he deals with it. And it's it's not re and you're right, it's not this big overblown thing, but I think I think in a way it's almost more refreshing that it isn't. Like I can pick up any manga any manga out there and it'll be this random giant thing with magical people people giant monsters even like you said princess resurrection was like this big almost in a way satire of the big uh universal movies movies uh we're we're gonna do uh keeping near the end of the month and that one in a way also goes a little over the top in how it does things and I think in a way, the fact that this doesn't go over the top, in a way, works best to its advantage, because there's not really anything like that. It's a I, very somber story, and I, I think that just, works. I just realized something. The reason what? this isn't clicking with me like it should is because it's not... There's no... <laughs> you realize you <laughs> dropped again! <laughs> oh god, that was so perfectly timed. Uh, okay, I'm back. Jo Jonathan, are you back? Okay. Uh, just go from, like, just go from I realize something. Yeah, I realized something. Uh, this series, the reason it didn't click with me, like uh, so many other, like, horror staples do, is because there's no self-awareness. There's no awareness of what came before it in trying to do something different or do a twist on it or uh, outdo it in some way. Like, Halloween was trying to bring back a like a tense realistic horror that didn't exist under all these supernatural pretenses uh, Friday the 13th tried to make it a uh, trashier and uh, more brutal and uh, like Nightmare on Elm Street tried to tap into uh, things we haven't and use abstract imagery in ways we hadn't seen from the genre and they were all aware they were trying to make something special and were all aware of what came before and what they had to do better. I don't think that ever crossed the mind of the person who created this. I think they just wanted to make a good, uh, spooky story, so they did, and then it just kind of... But it did! But it did come across his mind, because as we went over, as we went over before we started the podcast, and I think even earlier in the podcast, the idea of the stalker in the Japanese society didn't exist! No, no, so in our society, I, I know that, I know that, but I don't think he was trying to uh, break new ground by making the stalker into a horror monster, but it just sort of happened, and he was just trying to tell a story from maybe like a personal experience or a news story he saw. This, it happens, because like, if this was something that was really super self-aware of what it was trying to be, it would have been far more ridiculous than it actually was. Or like, uh, like make a pot shot or something but that never really happens it's too sincere which is kind of interesting all right well guys i think there's only one thing left and that is what do we rate this manga i give it a six out of ten i'm gonna go a little higher I i'm gonna say eight out of ten i i enjoyed this manga i'm I'm gonna say six out of ten too. Yeah, like right. good, but I, I don't want to call it no, average because it is better than that. It's also really entertaining, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> all, right. Yeah. all right, all right. Well, I think we've all said our pieces here. I I think we've all had our fun. So it's time to say goodbye, and th this is it. We have officially kicked off. The month of Halloween for Infinite Rainy Days. You all excited? I'm excited. All right. I'm gonna. So, uh, I'm gonna. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I, I was just gonna thank everyone for joining us, hey, and plugs. be sure to look forward to this month of Halloween you forgot along about plugs. with, huh? Plugs. Plugs? Oh, how about this for a plug? So, how many uh, light novel shows do you think you're gonna get stuck with in the seasonals, guys? <laughs> Everyone put uh, all, uh, nearly all of them on their I don't want to watch this list, so we're all going to end up watching one, I'm sure. The only... I was... It turns out I'm the only one who didn't uh, put 
the harem light novel show about the guy who gets taken to the old girls academy and he has to pretend he's gay so he doesn't get castrated. I'm the only one who didn't put that on my not to watch list, so. Oh, you're gonna, gonna get naked that. lollies! Yay! Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Joe just turned in his list, so I'm gonna know very shortly what everyone's gonna be watching until Funimation puts two weeks delays and everything I'm trying to watch and I have to reschedule everything, so that'll be fun. Of course. Of Yay. course. Anyways, for a. <laughs> yes, we had a drop, can you tell? Anyways, well, I'm... now they can. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to be uh, doing a lot this month. I'm going to review Beelzebub, have a review for Princess Resurrection's manga up. I'll be talking about it in the Heavy Storms podcast for the anime. I'm also going to do a beginner's guide on Higurashi, and the first thing you should see from me this month will be a review of the fourth Bleach movie, Hellverse. Where all the characters literally go to hell, Rukia gets rebirthed in lava, and two of the main characters end up having getting killed, having their bodies dried up and hung up from trees. So I figured that'd be Halloweeny. Yeah, it sounds it. You're also doing uh, the the Kiban the Kiban Yotsuya. Uh, oh oh yeah, I'm gonna be a, reading. Yeah, I'll be here for our third episode of the month. Yeah. It will uh, premiere uh, right the day before the Princess Resurrection uh, Heavy Storms episode. So, yeah, that will be fun. Yep. yep. I, I got I to gotta say one thing about uh, Kiban Yotsuya. That one's one of my personal favorite manga. I'm really excited to do that episode. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any, anything you need to plug, Danny? Um, not much. Um, I'm pretty much just going to be doing seasonals on rainy day for the coming month um look out soon for our uh final installment for the summer season i had a pretty good um allotment of shows to review this season and i'm happy about that so i'm gonna have uh, to I, I, all my thoughts on those and I'm gonna be dreading <laughs> what i'm gonna be getting next season <laughs> it's not gonna be valkyrie drive that's gonna be mine you can't rig the vote. Yeah, I won't, but I'm going to I know that's, you see, gonna, you say I know that. that's how you got I say that, school. but how many times has Jonathan's anime come up on Heavy Storms? <laughs> uh, hey, I, I, hey, I, still I didn't want my picks I still don't think win. you got prison school fairly. Still, I still don't think you got prison school fairly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, uh, I was really lucky Funimation due to the two-week delay bullshit on that. And I ha and speaking of which, I'm like one episode behind, which is like two episodes behind, no, three episodes behind. Actually, two episodes behind, but it's three for everyone else because I have to wait a fucking week. So I'm like yeah. caught up with Overlord, and I'm caught up with Monster Musume, but I need to catch up with every literally everything else, and I have to finish Gotcha Man, <laughs> and I have to finish uh, Cinderella Girls, because I want to review that at some point, because it kind of pisses me off so much. Oh god, I have so much anime to watch this week. Well, good luck, Jonathan. And all you out there, have a spooky night. Bye-bye! Would you say scary spooky? I would say scary, spooky skeletons. And, and please end this with the skull trumpet. <laughs>